I have to hit the button. Oh, okay. We're, we're, we're live. We're rolling. My bad. Yep, it just went live. Cool. Well, that's good. I'm glad you weren't caught yet. All right. So we're doing Isaiah chapter 40, part two tonight. Or the other, the other portion of the, the ones you guys did last week. All right. There, everybody, hold on a sec. Right? Okay. I got to share my screen. All right. I don't know why I keep, I'm still disappearing over here. Well, that's, I don't know why. I think he has to pinch it. Oh. Are you there now? I'm still half. Well, I had to move over a little bit to get in there. Oh, this way. I don't know which way, but I had to move. Yep, your camera's off. That's what it is. There we go. All right. So we get started. Are you guys ready? Yep. All right. So we're going to start out with verse 11 tonight. Uh, Isaiah's pray. been. We got to pray. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. That, that might help. We don't got yeah. it, but he would appreciate it. Yeah, we do. Yes. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. For this Bible study, Lord, we thank you for allowing us the ability to create the technology that we can uh, spread your word throughout the airwaves, Lord. We just thank you for that. We ask that you open up our hearts and our minds and our souls to your word, Lord, and that we can take away things we need to help spread your kingdom. We say all these things in Jesus' name. The Bible study says, Amen. 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 All right. All right. So I need to. What do we like better, this or this? That's 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 up to you. I have my cheat sheets. Okay. All right. Well, if I if I can see you on the side, then I can. Ooh. If you, you can signal me and tell me when to slow down or um, back up or anything, right? Yep. All right. We're gonna start with verse eleven tonight, and it starts out. It says, "He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm." And carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Now, the the key phrase is in the first part of that. It's most important, I think. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. I left the like a out. But in Psalms 23 is the great embodiment of the thought in the Old Testament. Um, as and also in John 10, it is the new in the new. But the thought itself is everywhere. If you look at those. Uh, verses that I listed there, the Psalms 77, 20, the Psalms 81, Jeremiah 13, 17, and 31 and 10, Jeremiah 1, 19, Ezekiel, Matthew, um, and Luke, the tender care of the shepherd for the, the, the ewes and the lambs may find a parallel in Jacob's pleas in Genesis even 33, 13. But what we see, I don't know if you guys want to look them up or not. Um Let's take an Old Testament one and a, and a New Testament one. So, uh, go ahead and do uh, do Jeremiah, and then we'll have somebody do Matthew. Oh, I got Matthew. Sherry's got Matthew. Okay. Yeah. Nine thirty six. And Lisa, when you're ready, you go. I got. David, you need to mute something over there. Okay. I've got Jeremiah 13, 17. Okay. But if ye will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and mine eye shall weep sore and run down with tears, because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. And, okay, so he's talking about what the, the shepherd's flock is being carried away, right? Okay. You got Jeremiah no, or Matthew. I have Matthew 9, 36. Okay. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Okay. All right. Do you guys hear that? You, you got it. Okay. All right. They heard you. Cool. Um, all right, so we're going to go on then. It's, in that previous verse, um, I keep looking up there to read it. It's not moving. Um, the fact that it had been asserted that God would come to his, to subdue his foes and to reward his people, right? Um, 
in this verse, the mild and gentle character of his government over his people is predicted. If, if you follow his laws and measures, then he takes care of you like a shepherd. Um, it would be a mild and tender. Um, it would not be that of a conqueror over vanquished subjects. It wouldn't be, a, you wouldn't be oppressed. You wouldn't be, um, what do you call it? Tortured or enslaved, right? Um, so like a shepherd, uh, he, he would tend, would guard you, he would govern you, he'd provide pasture, defend you from danger, um, as most shepherds would did when they were protecting their flocks. But it's often applied in scripture to God represented as the tender shepherd, and again, especially to the redeemer. Mm -hmm. And that's that we find in Psalms 23, 1 and Ezekiel. And then also in the New Testament, John and, and uh, Peter, right? So, um, Go ahead. so it's the lamb that is... Um, completely trusting of the shepherd. Yes. Gives everything to the shepherd. Completely relies on the shepherd. And so that's what they're trying to get across. Things like that. Right. Um, yes. If we, if we, they're, uh, sheep are basically pretty unintelligent uh, or uh, helpless creatures. I'll say that. Okay. Right. I really don't want to be called unintelligent. Yeah, right. But I am definitely a helpless <laughs> creature. Well, compared to the <laughs> shepherd. Well, compared to the shepherd, we're probably pretty unintelligent. I'm an amoeba. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, that God has always said, in, even in the Old Testament, that He wanted to, uh, He would take care of them that were faithful to Him and follow the, the His uh, commandments, and provide everything for Him over in an abundance. So that's what we're seeing here, right? So we're, we're, we'll start with the. Uh, yeah, we don't see it today, though, right? You don't see this, the, the verb translated feed is to feed. And it's mm -hmm. Yara um, means more than our word uh, feed today and present means, right? So remember that when you see the word feed, or like when um, Christ was feeding the multitude the, that had gathered, right? right? He was to feed them. He was bringing them substance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not just allowing them to eat, but bringing them nourishment for their spiritual and their uh, physical body. Yeah. Okay. And the only reason he actually fed them, physically fed them, is because they weren't listening anymore because of their the hunger, hangriness. Their hangriness, hangriness. Yeah. They didn't have Snickers back then, so you couldn't pass them out, right? <laughs> All right. So we'll go to verse 12. And uh, verse 12 starts out and says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? And meted out heaven with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. Now, this right here is where Isaiah kind of changes, and he's doing, um, I would call, a, what do you call them? Um, symbolisms, so the people would understand, right? So the first thing that everybody's concerned with is. Uh, and, and we start with the first phrase is, who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Now, the uh, for indicative verbs in the Hebrew language are often taken um, potentially. I'm sorry. Can we request that you slow down just a little bit before you move up? Because some people are taking notes off of the notes because they don't have the paperwork. Do you want me to pass the paperwork? There you go. Said? No, no. Yeah, so everybody knows um, I created a Reddit account, and I'll be uploading these as Dan sends them to me to Reddit. Okay. So print them out from there. You can read them later. Um, okay. And then when we get everything more automated, uh, our web guy will be able to automate that for us. Oh, wow. Okay. So uh -huh. we're moving along. All right. All right. So. Um, we're not moving along in the bio. We're, we're moving up and learning better technologies. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, they, he started out with water, if you notice in that 12th verse, right? And who's the living water? Jesus. Jesus Christ, right? And he measures that in the hollow of his hand. That's God. If, if we tell you to, well, how many years did it take for the scientists to figure out how much water is on Earth? Right? To calculate the uh, depths of the oceans and, and the amount of water in the mountains. Yes. Yeah. It... Um, it's still the same water, right? Anyway, so what if, Sherry goes, uh, what if it rains, right? Total water volume, okay. 
<laughs> anything, right? So what we're, what we're seeing here is he's trying to get these people to grasp a concept that all the water that they've ever seen or that's in existence could fit in the hollow of God's hand. Does that, can, can you see that there? Yes. All right. Okay. Or who can measure them? Because man at the time could not measure it. Oh, you're fine. All right. So in his, uh, um, the, Isaiah is trying to get them to understand that there's not a man alive that can do what God can do. Right. And the discourse of God's infinite power and wisdom is here conveniently added to give them the greater assurance that God was able, as he had declared himself willing, to do these great wonderful things which he had promised. Neither men nor false gods were able to hinder him in completing it. He's so powerful that if he can comprehend all the water uh, in our existence in, in the palm of his hand, what else can he do, right? So right. he gives them another example here that says, meted out heaven with the span. Right now, this is grant us the ability to comprehend what God can do. So he met it out or has stretched out heaven as a curtain. Right. I don't know if you guys understand that. Um, you can't move it. You have to well, they don't want me to scroll that fast. Oh. Right, right, right. So what we what we'll see is he's he went from um, I, I call it a bodily need, a life giving need of water. Right. Mm -hmm. To a visual here is like. If you look at the heavens above you, right, and you see this, it's a great curtain. It is, it's, you know, spans everything that in, in sight, right? So he stretched that out so that um, it would be for our for our benefit, not for his, right? Um, and Isaiah is trying to make a point here in this this, uh, and he'll do it later in in twenty two that. That measure, which is but one hand's breadth of God's. So on one hand, he holds all the water of the earth. And the next one, he controls all the heavens. And, he, and it's like he just spread his fingers out you know, like, like a span, right, from, from thumb to uh, little finger. And that's, that's the entire heavens that we, we can see and, and uh, visually comprehend. Does that make sense? Okay, got that? All right. The, he did it with his hand, okay? Okay. Um, I'm going to go down to the next part of it. Okay. It is. Yeah, here you go. Excuse me. So, what we have there. 12 to 22. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. So, I, I re reference the fact that in 4022, he'll, he'll come back to this, okay? Um, okay. It's, it's it's no more to him than stretching on a carpet or a canopy, and or as measured by him as a piece of cloth by a man. Um, we we use uh they used to use the uh, the length of your from the center of your chest to your uh, fingertips was a yard. In the old days, that's how they measured lengths of fabric. Okay, Ooh. so they're talking about the same thing here. It was it was nothing to him, right? Uh, it was a simple task, right? Um, so then he goes to a, the next one, right? He goes, so he went from a, a water source, a life-giving source, to a visual overhead source, and now, now we're going to comprehend the dust of the earth, right? Wow. Yeah, and comprehend the dust of the earth in a measure. You notice these are all, um, it would be common terms with the, the people at the time. Um, it, they, they measured out um, land. They measured out um crops they, they did all of these things in, in measures okay the word measured signifies the third part of some larger measure um i was trying to give an example of the other day uh in my head i was talking thinking about sometimes we'll take a, a picture and if, if you look on your measuring cups sometimes it's in thirds sometimes it's in fourths have you ever seen that on your measuring cups i was going to save it as a pdf so i could do slides Okay. <laughs> All right. So the, the um, or an epha, epha. I don't know if you guys remember the epha from the Old Testament. That was a measure of wheat. All right. Uh, or even a bath, as others might render it in the Latin. A bath was a, a, a system of measurements. Right. Um, so the Vulgate uh, Latin version renders it with three fingers. Right. 
So with, with what he could gather between his thumb and his two forefingers would be the dust of the earth in a measure, a pinch. You pin, like you pinch up some salt or some earth, right? Um, so that the dust of the earth or the earth itself, which is bud yeah. dust, is no more than with the Lord than so much earth or a dust as a man can hold between his thumb and two fingers. So in like manner is the whole earth comprehended by the Lord. It's, the whole earth is really small in comparison to what he, his majesty or his capabilities. What, he, what he's trying to do is humble these people, right? So he's now uh, taken the, the earth and made it so small that you could pinch it between three fingers, right? He holds the water in one hand and he spread a canopy out above him and that's all the heavens right so it he's trying to create visual pictures of what i see right and so in the next uh portion of that it says so we have um water sky earth oh my gosh is that similar to earth wind and fire right <laughs> oh, anyway <laughs> yeah. right you get you get what I'm going at, right? Mm -hmm. The four elements and air, right? So he weighed out the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. Now, this would be easily as a, as a man can throw uh, his goods into a pair of scales and take the true weight of them. Um, they would weigh out things in gold and, and silver, especially if you had to pay. I don't know if you've seen some of the old movies they had. They had the uh, tax collector sitting there with the scales on a on a table, right? So that's what they were doing. He's trying to use a symbolic measure um, that would be a that would be something they would understand, right? <laughs> so if you take the true weight of them, the scales, and take the true weight of whatever you're measuring, um, so with equal ease did the Lord raise the mountains and the hills. So if I was going to place something on a scale, um, you guys ever weighed fruit at the at the market, mm -hmm. right? The scales they have there. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those. Right. So if if I was to take an apple and put it on a scale, it'd be like God putting mountains on it. OK. OK. Right. And then he's got to balance the, the mountains and the hills. Right. And it, it'll come up later. Um, he raised the mountains in, in, in a proper proportion. Did you realize that the way uh, the earth is right now with the water and the, uh, the continents all split apart? It's in a perfect balance. Do you guys realize that? And he adjusts accordingly. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, a lot of times, what we don't we we don't realize that at one time when this was one whole um, continent, the the whole Earth was one continent. Right. Um, it was very much out of balance. Um, so. We, we also seem to hint at the use of mountains and hills to be sort of a balance to the earth. Our earth was originally very chaotic. Is that what the word I'd like to use? Um, there was uh, massive volcanoes. There was earthquakes. Um, it wasn't stable. The earth, uh, the seas weren't stable. So by splitting up the continents when he did at the time of Gad's birth, it balanced out the world so that we could travel it and, and it would not be, um, it would be habitable, I guess is the word I'm saying, right? Um, the oceans, we could travel the oceans in safety. Um, okay. So that he's, by using these concepts, he's trying to get them to understand that whatever we comprehend is so small and so insignificant to him that he doesn't even he doesn't even think about it. It's just a, a, a movement for him, right? Um, so it says 13, who hath directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor hath taught him. Now, this is where Isaiah starts picking at them, I guess I would say, or challenging their thought process, right? So he says, who hath directed? This passage is quoted by Paul in Romans 11, 34. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, Lisa, if you look up uh, 1 Corinthians 2.16 for me. You said 1134? 1134. 
Oh, okay. You want to set it over here? 1134. All right. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Right. That's all it says. Yeah, that's, that's, this Paul was like actually questioning the people at the time period again, right? And then 1 Corinthians. Or who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Right. Okay. Do you guys understand what he, what that what he's saying there? Yeah, he's saying our God is bigger than your problems. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Thank no you. matter how big your how problems big your are, problem, think your problems are, he's bigger. And he's already saying you already know this. Right. And through Christ, you have what? Victory. Uh, You've overcome among it. Other things. Other, other things, right? <laughs> so the the word here, um, that. It, it's reiterated in first hand. The word rendered directed here is got to count. It's the same which is used in the previous verse, and it means meted out heaven. Well, meted. Meted, right? The idea here is that <laughs> who has fitted or disposed the mind or the spirit of Yahweh? Who, who is who is his counselor? Who who would be above him, right? No one is what Isaiah is trying to get across, right? What superior being has ordered, instructed, or disposed his understanding? Who taught God? No one, right? Um, who was qualified? Who has qualified him for the exercise of his wisdom or the formation and execution of his plans? He's saying that there's no one, nothing that man can create that's above God. There's no one superior to him, right? And we talk about that a lot whenever they say, well, I did this, God didn't do this. And then you go, really? Where'd you get your stuff from? Right. <laughs> we talked about that last week, right? Mm -hmm. they, the scientists were going to make something. They had they had to get their own sources, right? So no one has an instructor to guide him, but his plans are his own and have all been formed by himself alone. So that, he's trying to tell get these people to understand that God is everything. All knowing, all seeing, all understanding but you know it's hard to help somebody understand that whenever you can't even fathom how how, how big, big he is. is that's why he was using the the common term measures mm -hmm. to try to give a, a concept to them right um but anyway the, the sense is god is supreme oh yeah all right um the, so the spirit of the lord the word spirit is, is used in the bible in a great greater variety of senses than almost any other word in the biblical writings by the way okay it seems here to be used in the sense of mind and we refer to God himself. So the, the word spirit of the Lord means his consciousness or his existence, mm -hmm. right? Um, there is no evidence that it refers to anything, uh, to anyone else, right? Or anything else. Um, where am I at? Here we go. Um, it, it, he's not talking about the Holy Spirit here. Mm -hmm. no, so, don't, so don't get confused because Christ gave us the Holy Spirit, right? But this is the Spirit of the Lord. It, it, he's trying to give them an idea of an existence of the Supreme Being, that he has substance, right? Um, so in that concept, the, the word spirit he uses says Calvin, which was a, a, a theologian. For reason of judgment, the spirit he uses is for judgment. Um, his spirit is always. We got to move up. Oh, that's on that one. Yeah. There we go. Uh, for but judgment. See over the people. Right. You guys need to help. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Okay. That that spirit of the Lord that he uses that for judgment, right? Calvin, like Calvin and Hobbes. No, not Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> it's a different Calvin. He's a theologian, right? So um, the next part of that phrase is, or being his counselor hath taught him. Who taught God? No one. God's all supreme and right? In Hebrew, it is as man of his counsel, um, or being his counselor, man of his counselor. Uh, he is not dependent for counsel on men or angels. Does God ask the angels what they think? No, but he does ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit what they think. Ah, so his son... And his spirit, right? Uh -huh. The Holy Spirit. He is supreme, independent, and infinite. That's mm -hmm. what 
Isaiah is trying to get it across to them. You, you can't fathom what he can do. You can't fathom what what is... The earth to us is so large that it's hard for us to comprehend the size of it. I don't know if you guys have ever traveled across um, around the world or even across the United States, like we did this last week, right? Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's so tiny to him, you know? Um, so, but there's no one qualified to instruct him. And all, therefore, should confide in his wisdom and knowledge. If he created the heavens and can hold all the waters in his hand, one hand, and and he, and he can pinch up all the, all the earth, the dust itself, in, into three fingers, what can he not do? And yeah. yet he knows every the hair on, on every our, person's head. head. Right. And that's another way to expand his, uh, his I call it his deity, right? His existence so that we can relate to it right all right so uh, I think where we're at okay so on being his counselor I taught him uh, we got that far right oh there, there we go yeah so he says this again in 14 he goes with him took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the uh, I said caught up there Oh, uh, in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding, right? So Isaiah is trying to get, pick these people's brains to wake them up. I think he's dealing with a woke community, right? <laughs> well, yeah, because they're probably saying they're trying to instruct God in their ways. Right. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned a while back that, that uh, so many times we're asking God for something, Right. Instead of just receiving, right? What he's giving us. Um, he knows what we need. He, he knows, does want us to talk to him. Now. Yeah, he wants us to bring it to him and mm -hmm. ask, right? So um, this is the same as before, only repeated in other words. So Isaiah is really good about changing how it's presented so that more people can pick up on the thought. Because um, everybody has a different learning level, different learning styles. Uh, so he, he changed it just a little bit there. So that, oh, you know, like, um, say your farmer and and your your vineyard people, they sometimes they talk different words in different languages because it's part of their culture with what they're doing. So he's trying to get everybody involved in this this conversation. You what? I can't hear you. Trending. Translate. Oh, he's trans translate. What you just said. I mean, translate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Um, farmers go and they measure by uh, rods and acres, right? So in a, in a vineyard, you what are you what are you trying to translate? He's translating. Oh yes, yes. Isaiah is translating it into common words and understanding for them, right? Yeah, parables like Jesus did. Yeah, like parables, but not but not really parables. But he's but, just. You know, when you get excited about something mm -hmm. and you just got to tell somebody right. many different ways, you know, I mean, I mean, this is just not enough to tell you. I need to tell you this and this and this to express to you just how big, how big and how great he is, powerful, yeah. great and righteous yeah. is our God. Mm -hmm. So... He's using this also to strongly deny that any mere creature counseled, taught, and instructed the spirit of Christ also in the ordering and managing the works of creation because Christ was there in the beginning, right? He was the word. Which is why, who, who are we to say that his way is not right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, that's just stupid. How powerful do we think we are? Yeah, we have nothing, right? Uh, so... It, it goes on there, and, it, and he goes back again and taught him the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding. Now, who could give him that judgment, knowledge, and understanding and framing the world and all the things in it? There, There is no one that exists beyond him. He created everything. And he knows everything. And he knows everything because he created it. 
um, we're still discovering today things that he created that we're just now having an understanding of. Uh, Dave, you brought it up too about the uh, the heart that's in the northern hemisphere in one of your lessons before, didn't you? Yes. In the in in the in the in the heavens, right? Um, yep. The DNA uh, sequence in, uh, of man mm -hmm. uh, spells out the name Yahweh. Yeah. Yep. In Hebrew, in a number of uh, chromosomes and, and uh, yeah, yep. patterns. Pastor right. Dave, the science guy. Yeah, Pastor Dave, the science guy. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so I'm good. You're good at it. I'm no. I'm said I'm good with that title. Okay, Pastor Dave. I like that. That's we may have to use that one. Well, because right. Bill Nye, the science guy, is not a Christian. No, he's not. You're absolutely right. He's right. He's not. So he's not even a scientist. He's not a scientist. No, he's not. He's an actor. <laughs> he's an actor. That's it, right? Um, so if there's no one that can teach him this, right? And just think about all the beauty that God created around the world that we see, right? Mm -hmm. Who put those? those atoms and molecules together to create that, right? We can't re replicate it, right? So uh, it shows to be a work of wisdom because there's a lot of wisdom and knowledge that has to go in for everything to balance, right? Um, could have struck out such a path of judgment. Um, there's a balance in the world, right? And it's such a way of understanding or showed such exquisite skill and knowledge as appear in the works of his creation, right? Um, okay, this example. I know that there's enough nerve uh, paths in the human body to stretch from here to the moon in each in the human individual. Can you believe that? Ooh. That's how many miles of nerve endings you have in your body. Makes sense. Yeah, how did he figure that out? How did he know we need that many, right? I couldn't have figured it out. So, you know, but he did, and it was, it was nothing. He just folded this up and yeah. put it in this little compact body. Yeah, he, he put it all together, right? <laughs> okay. So, so here. For a while. Yeah, right. There you go, right? All right. So, in Psalms 104.24, um, Sherry's looking it up. I think Lisa probably already got, got it. Don't you? Did you get it, Lisa? I got it. No. You got it. Okay. Yeah, I knew she would. I'll give you saves me from salt. <laughs> oh, it's a perfect verse for you too, Lisa. Okay, 104 24 24 34. Oh, 24. oh Lord, how manifold are they worth? Right, never mind. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. 24. Yeah, how many of your works are you yeah. made them all earth? Full of your creatures. Full of your creatures, right? Yeah. Guys, do you you want a concept of something that's really great? Um, the bugs in the world outnumber the humans a hundred to one. At least the flies. I know. I can't seem to get rid of all these darn flies. <laughs> the flies by themselves. The flies by themselves the take over the world, Jeez. right? So there's a balance there, right? Okay. So let's There's go. There's a balance. There is. <laughs> okay. So let's do 15 and then it'll make more sense as we go along, right? Okay. It says, Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. Now, behold the nations, right? He's talking about all the nations there. This is designed to show the greatness of God in comparison with that which strikes man as a great or mighty nation. He. You know, these people understood that um, there was other kingdoms that would try to conquer them, right? That was a nation against nations, right? And and God's saying that all of them together are insignificant, <laughs> right? What we think is great or mighty nation is nothing to him. It's dust. And we'll get through this in a second. The main object seems to be to show that God could accomplish his purpose without their aid, 
and that they could not resist him in the execution of his plans. That's what that's what Isaiah is trying to get across to them. Don't worry about the the, the enemy that's going to come and attack you, because if you have faith and you follow the the one true God, they can't harm you, right? Um, and and if you think they're powerful, you haven't seen God act yet, right? <laughs> that type of thing. So, um, and he has to prove it over and over and over again. Yeah, he does to them. If there was there's nothing in comparison with him, so how easily could he execute his purpose? I mean, if you think about it, how hard did Christ um, have to work to heal somebody? Even he, as a young boy. Well, he, well, I'm saying in his ministry, all he did was speak. Or somebody touched his robe. Or touched his robe, right. Right, exactly. That's how powerful this the father had endowed his son mm -hmm. with that, right? And that was just the, the human on earth. It was just a portion of it it's not even it's a very small amount right so um so that drop of a bucket it said it's better it's better it should have said on a bucket you know i don't know if you guys such a drop adds nothing to the weight which the bear feels um you ever had condensation run down a glass or off uh, off a pan that you were carrying right mm -hmm. and it drops on the floor right that's that's a <laughs> So that's the same thing he says, as little do the nations and the isles to the burden which Jehovah bears. It's it's what we place on him is like a drop of water off a bucket. It's insignificant, it has no no it doesn't change any factors. And yet it's so devastating and dark Dust, and right? <laughs> heavy for people. For people, right. Um so in the rest of that phase uh, that verse goes and counted as the small dust in the balance. Now this this is interesting to think about. This presents another illustration of the same idea that the small fine dust, which collects on the best finished and most accurate balances or scales, and which has no effect in making the scales uneven or making either side unequal in measure, the fact that the nations are regarded as nothing in comparison with God. He's saying that all the nations of the earth are like the dust that's in the air that collects on the scale. It's nothing. It has no measure. Has no measure to him. It has, it's, it has nothing. It's, it's as if nothing was there. It's not going to change his purpose, his plan, or or his uh, plan for his people, right? His children. So he so thinks. Well, this, this is timely for us to know this that we are not putting faith in a God that is that big. Right. And yet loves us. Yep. Yeah. It's amazing to, to comprehend that. That with all that he does and he controls and he balances in our universe and our, our lives and and even in our own country today, he's working, right? Mm -hmm. That he takes the time to to, to to affect his purpose on all of us individually. How, how can I, I don't know if I could do it. I mean, I have our time running two two dogs and a cat around the house. That'd right? be like us caring about a little flea. Yeah, like yeah, about us caring about a flea, right? right. <laughs> or maybe um, making sure that the flea is taken care of. Right. <laughs> you know. It's even smaller, right? I know, but I mean, yeah, flea's pretty small. So <laughs> these aisles that he takes up is a very little thing. Literally, he takes up islands or perhaps lands generally, as he weighs mountains and hills in his mouth, so he can take up in his own hands lands or countries with all their inhabitants and can do with them as he seems that as seems good to him. They are no burden to him. How many times has he pulled the children of Israel out of another country in our, in our readings, right? They, they out are, of Egypt, out of Babylon, out of... They I are mean, no burden to him. They're no burden, yeah. And yet, oh, I don't want to burden God with my problems. Right. Yeah. Hello? So sometimes, you know... People, people say, I'm going to take care of it myself. And they're like, why? <laughs> I got a God that can do anything, right? And it's not even not even a drop of sweat off a bucket. I don't say why. I say, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So it works out for you, right? <laughs> right. Now, this, this verse here is kind of a key thing. The um, We know in later times that the temple that David built... Um, and Jerusalem um, used the cedars of Lebanon. And there's a reference here too. And it says, 
and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. So he's talking about a particular area. Isaiah's telling him about a people that live on the coast away from Judah. Okay? And they would have been very familiar with them because it was probably where they got uh, a lot of the wood supplies for building. Okay? Um, the thought is the same. It says, Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. And the thought is the same as that of Psalms 50, 10 and, uh, through 12. Um, okay. I got it. I got it? Wow, you're quick. All right. I was already in Psalms. Oh, okay. There you go, girl. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty pretty amazing if you think about it, right? Is that so, is that red letter or is that that's David writing? That's right? David, yeah. That's King David uh, uh, writings, right? So Lebanon is chosen as a type of the forest that would supply the wood for burnt offerings in this time period, right? In which Judah was comparatively poor in. They didn't they didn't have the resources of trees, right? So in Nehemiah's organization of the temple ritual, that the task of supplying wood for this purpose was assigned by lot to the priest or the Levite Levites, and that's in Nehemiah, right? So Isaiah knew that they would be familiar with this concept. All right. He said, I have it if you want me to read it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. It just says, um, and we cast the lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people, and the wood offering to bring it into. Yeah, to the temple, right. Okay. So they would cast it so no one was burdened with it, and it would take turns bringing it in. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, there's there's more to that. Um, sorry. Yes. Yeah. My phone didn't show it. To bring it into the house of our God after the houses of our fathers at times appointed year by year to burn upon the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law. In the law, right. Okay. So, so this, this is the continuous burning. That's why they yes. rotated it. Yes. And yes. there was somebody was always was always there for supplying the wood the, for the yes. for the altar. Right. So what he, what he, uh, Isaiah is trying to get across to him that no matter how much wood you brought in from Lebanon, it was never going to be enough. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. if you were to burn all Lebanon as firewood, all of it, on God's altar and offer there all the clean beasts of the entire land of Lebanon. It still would put God under no obligation to man. Amen. He That's had us right. doing that. He didn't. He, he didn't want the sacrifices. He didn't. He, it was just a way to keep you, uh, keep the people aware of Him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, man would even have them have, then have paid less than his debt if he if he burned all of the the country of Lebanon and all the beasts. Right? It still wouldn't be su sufficient to to please God. Because our sins are so great, right? Um, right. Yeah, I think you read it. Uh, where am I at here? Very little. Yeah, Dave needs to move up a little bit. Though. So, um, the prophet Isaiah that even if we're if a man were to burn all evidence for everyone on God's altar, right, right. It still would put God under no obligation. Men would even have paid less than his debt. So, what is Isaiah trying to tell him? Move it up, Dave. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. So, what is Isaiah trying to get across to these people, Justin? Right? He's trying to, to get across to them that, that the sacrifices are for us not for him it's to show our obedience does that make sense it was is, how do you pay a debt to, to a god yeah I, you know he calls it a sweet savory flavor right, right? or smell or whatever smell right. it's like taking a bottle of febreze <laughs> spraying the atmosphere one spray all right but well, febreze isn't isn't a savory smell no, <laughs> yeah, I know. If you walk, if you walk through the house with a brisket, this come off the 
the the smoker. The smoker. Yeah, that's a savory. So now we're talking. Right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, yeah, the, let's go to 17. It says, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. Mm. So when we talked about earlier the fact that he used different armies and different uh, uh, kings of different lands to subdue a, and, and judge his people, and then he destroyed those armies. You guys remember that? He killed a, what was it? 180,000 yeah. in one night or something yep. like that. Mm -hmm. They mean nothing to him. Right. No. They, they, ha they serve the purpose. They serve the purpose. Right. Right. And then they were eliminated. Right. So as nothing or less than nothing, um, uh, there's some different uh, verbiage on it. It says better of not, belonging to the category of nothingness. Uh, the Hebrew is tohu. Uh, my, ka, my book says worth, worthless. Worthless, right? A word that, which means primarily a waste. And is applied in Genesis one two the the prime evil chaos. Remember the the in the beginning there was the heavens the earth without form. Mm -hmm. They they were nothing. They they didn't have any substance. They were just gases, right? right? So Isaiah twenty nine we did before and uh, those are the things you were talking about. Right, those armies. That armies, you used, right? And then. And then here, in other cases, it, it, it's a synonym for non-entity. They don't, ex they they have no existence. Um, we also see that later on um, in uh, Revelation, the synonym for non-entity. Um, they are nothing. They they are thrown into the lake of fire, and the smoke is uh, that comes up dissipates into nothing. You'll see this word again. Okay. So let's go into verse. Uh, 18 it says to whom then will ye liken god or what likeness will you compare him uh compare unto him I you tell no me to that. right well now here's what's coming up this is kind of he's kind of coming to a point here right it, it, we'll start out with this to whom then will you liken him? there's nothing in the whole creation that can bear any resemblance to him or he to them um he's totally a different Existence. Does that make sense? It is mentioned as an antidote to prevent the Jews from falling into idolatry in Babylon, where they would be exposed unto, uh, unto to idolatry. Also to prevent Christians in the gospel times from going into the idolatry of the Papist. And that's in Acts 17, 28. You got that? Yeah. For in him we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. offspring. Right. Right. So he was trying to, to get the, at the time this was written, um, he's trying to get the Christians to remain that we uh, remember that we are part uh, of his, his existence, his, his, his purpose. Does that make sense? Where um, if we follow him, then we become his children. We've talked about that before. Right. So we're part of him. Right. Um, now we get into the nitty gritty. Why? Why Isaiah is throwing such a, a bunch of questions at him? He goes in verse 19. He says, "The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spread it over with gold and casteth silver chains." He's accusing and getting to get these people to wake up because they have already started into idolatry. Mm -hmm. So the workman, the Hebrew word denotes an uh, artificer of any kind and is applied to one who engraved on wood or stone and it's you can find that in exodus 28 too uh, um we also can see it is you got it go ahead it says and thou shalt make holy garments for aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty uh okay so that was someone that worked with materials right uh to work with an iron brass and stone Wood, Exodus 35, uh, 35, right? Have you got that one? No, you're reading. Do you want me to hit it since I'm already in Exodus? Okay. And you want to do Deuteronomy? It's the third book. I know where Deuteronomy is. Okay, you got it. You just passed it. I know. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Somebody's up. Okay, so... Exodus 35, 35. 
them that he them hath he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workman and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple in scarlet and in fine linen and of the weaver even of them that do any work and of those that devise cunning work ah okay so it includes everything right and then deuteronomy 27 15 uh, sherry has here cursed is anyone who makes an idol a thing detestable to the lord the work of skilled hands and sets it up in secret then all the people shall say amen right so by by him bringing this up the way he did right he says who gave you the ability to work and, and the goldsmith and the and then uh, the workman right those are all gifts from god aren't they those skills right um or an artisan or artifact here refers mainly manifestly to a man who worked in the metals of which idols were commonly made he's in an area where he's noticed this as he's trying to, to get them to understand that false idols uh gods uh the things they worship aren't aren't the true god right okay so a, a melteth means to cast or founds to make a mold or receive melted metal you've seen castings of different things right then a graven image the hebrew word is pasel a pasel right this word commonly denotes a image card or or grave or graven uh, from wood and we don't have to read all those it just talks about the in the time of Exodus and Judges, all the way through Isaiah, the, the, these people were highly sought after because they could create works of art and, and build great structures for the kings and, and, and people, right? Skilled, skilled, master, craft, craft, skilled craftsmen, 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 like we call master craftsmen today, okay. um, right? Um, but this, this graven image is, also, is often frequently applied to a molten image, or one that is cast from metals. Um, so he's he's trying to get he's 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 speaking to all of them i think if you really think about it um all right let's go on to four and it says so sorry i had to show my patch off my master craftsman patch oh is that what it is okay <laughs> yeah see those, that's a gift right there you go see it's on yep. that cool all right that's so cool they would have been seeking you they would have been seeking you wouldn't help them yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't have no, built them. I would have gave him some word. There you go. <laughs> I put a note here um, on the next page. There you go. So they can see it. It says, it is used in this sense here as there is an incongruity in the idea of casting or melting a graven image, right? Some people don't understand that uh, they'd make the cast or the mold, <coughs> or they would. Uh, melt the yeah. gold and pour it. Uh, thank you. They would pour it over the the image they had carved out, right? Oh, okay. So there's two ways there, right? Uh, we call it what uh, gold plating today. You get stuff that's right. gold plated, or, or yeah, or yeah, um, plated with metals, right? So the goldsmith here spreads it over with gold. Idols were frequently overlaid with gold or silver. Um, those were which were in the temples of the gods were probably com commonly made in this way, and probably those also which were made for private use as if as far as it could be afforded. The word here rendered goldsmith, however, does not of his necessity man necessity man a worker in gold, but a smith in general or a worker of any kind of metals. Okay. So at the well, time, the goldsmith didn't apply to just gold. It was a metal smith, basically. Yeah. Um, or a jewelry yeah. maker or something. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, it's funny because when God tells them to make things out of gold and silver, it's always solid. Yeah, there's no plating. It's it not plated. Either. It's funny how they worship their gods and everything, but their gods only get wood carvings just plated in gold. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no substance there. No and substance. And the God yeah. always gets solid gold. Yes right Ooh, that's and then he wants it then he wants it cast back into the fire a few times to make sure it's even more pure mm -hmm. right, right. the highest grade right so and cast these silver chains it says it casts silver chains 
These are to be put about the graven image, either for ornament or rather to fasten it to some wall or pillar so that it may stand upright and not be taken down or stolen away, but also it so serves to also not be blown down with the wind or fall and be broken. <laughs> right. Ooh. You're worshiping something that can fall off a shelf and break. Right. How yeah. stupid are you? Anyway. Well, this. Hang on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Geez, I can't remember if it was Isaiah or the previous Bible study, but it talked about God shaking their false temples and their idols yes. and stuff falling and breaking. Yep. Yeah. Remember that? that was a, yeah, that was in Ball. That was in the previous chapter, uh, previous uh, study group. Right. Um, so it's funny that this mentions that they fasten them in such a way that the wind can't blow them off them. or they can't fall down. And then they're fastened such that way, but God made them fall and break. Yes, he did, didn't he? <laughs> Without it, without any problems whatsoever. He's like, yeah, then, this is not. He's like, right? Knocked him right over, right? Yeah. Um, so these uh, these chains, um, this this ridiculing the weakness of these idols is what Isaiah is doing here, right? And the folly of the makers and worshippers of them. He's making fun of them. He's like, you're wasting your talents. You think this is going to stop God from judging? You know, right? See, he's pretty good. blunt. We're talking about. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, see, see what see what happens. See how that works for you, right? Yeah. So, you put a note in here is a change in content back to the context. Go. Now, this this is where he starts a little. He changes thought patterns here for a second, right? And uh, I, let me get uh, twenty. It, twenty. It, yeah, yeah, twenty. It says. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Right? So that was, that was right above it. But, would that be like an ironwood tree or something like that? Yeah, he would choose hardwoods or something mm -hmm. that was uh, impervious to, to dry rot. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, cedar is a very good wood for that. The cedar is a Lebanon. Um, cedar has um, resistant to... Um, what do we call it? Uh, termites. It's resistant right. to bugs. We, we use it in like dog houses, dogs' houses, and, and, and closets. You'll see cedar, right? So, he, but he, the important part of this one here is that he that is so impoverished it is described a poor class of people or with or with little or no funds. He, he, that he hath no oblation. He has no offering, nor sacrifice, nor rich gift. This is the poor people. He, before he was talking about the ones that could have the golden stuff, right? Now he went to the the, the lower class, right? Um, he is too poor to make such an offering to his gods. It would be implied as an idol or brass or other metal. He didn't even have the funds to get it plated, right? Or richly overlaid with plates of gold and decorated with silver chains, right? But he so, didn't stop him. so, but then he chooses a tree right. that won't rot, right? Would that be would be durable and permanent? Perhaps the idea is that he. As he could not afford one of metal, he would choose one that which would be the most valuable, which he could make is, is out of wood, a piece of wood that was durable and that would thus show his regard for the God that he worshipped. Right. Does man always make a way for his own yes. sin? Yep. yep. Right? He finds a way, huh? Yes. Right? So he looks and he, right? We make excuses, don't we? So Isaiah is calling him out on it, right? So a cunning workman, in Hebrew it means a, a wise artificer or a, a, a wise uh, worker, of, of, uh, a gifted craftsman. That's mm -hmm. what we're trying to say, right? A man skilled in the art of carving and uh, or making images from wood, right? Whittler. So, yeah, uh, yes, right. And then a graven image, an image engraved out or cut from wood, in contradistinction from that one that is molded and made from metals. Now, we should be if you think back, do you remember when Joseph went to get a bride and he worked up there, right? Who stole the, the images and sat on them in the tent? Do you remember that? They were wooden images. Rachel. Rachel did. 
you remember that? And and he came and, and challenged Joseph. Joseph had no idea that she had taken them. Right? These were carved oh, yeah. wood. They were engraved or cut from wood. They were. Uh, and they were from her culture. They were from her culture, and, she, and they were pagans. Were her gods, and she wanted them. Right. Yeah. Wonder why she wasn't blessed. To let her, right. So. <laughs> And this key, the very last part of it, this says, that shall not be moved. That shall stand long as the expression of his devotion to the service of the idol. The phrase is, is to its durability and permanency in that it will not totter. It was so, some of these images were so large and heavy, made out of wood, that I would call them totem poles today. And today, those idols are replaced with, with other things. With other things. Oh, how about my car? Yes. Or how about my house? Right? Or, or whatever, right? Right. Now, power. Right. Right. Power. Control. Control. Right. Green. So what we have. Um, you well, other things. Them? There's other things with, well, they carve them to make them, but money. Yes. Right. Exactly. Right. A lot of people worship money. Yep. Yeah. And it's all based on gold. Yeah, it's based well, on gold. In some countries, not here anymore, but in some countries. Yeah, right. Um, we just print as much as we want. Yeah, you, you notice that one too. Yeah, right? and now we use Bitcoin. It's coming. She's not even real. So Wait, she, she's going to do First Samuel right there real quick. Okay. Samuel 5, yeah. 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. There's a bug yeah. on the bottom. First Samuel 5, 3 and 4. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. They took Dagon and put him back in his place. But the following morning, when they rose, there was Dagon falling on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold. Only his body remained. That's similar to what you were talking about, Dave. Um, the fact that God could knock it down and break its arms and its legs off right yep <laughs> and they and they and they took many men to set that back up by the way right <laughs> so yeah. whatever you yeah. how powerful is your god right yeah so all right yeah we watched the show the other night oh, i don't remember what it had to have been modern marvels and they <laughs> talked about that the big the or the unexplored unexplained or something but they talked about that big statue that over the city and, and there was an earthquake mysteriously and it, it broke off at the knees. It would have yes. to do with structure. No, I think it might have been Modern Marvels because they Modern Marvels, they talk about the stuff today, but then they go back in time about it, it was engineer failures in engineering or something like that. But mm -hmm. they were talking about how they didn't have the knowledge and everything was guesswork back then to make things that large. But it, it was fine until it was until God knocked it down. But they didn't say yeah. God knocked it down, but we, we know who did. Yeah, right. He caused the earth to shake, right? Well, there mm -hmm. was just a statue that fell down within the last couple of years. I don't remember the full story about that, but there was. And it was like, good. Good. You don't yeah. remember, do you? No, I don't. The building burned? Oh. Uh, yeah, I kind of do, but I'm, uh, let's let's finish this up. Mm -hmm. So, what we're gonna have next, I think that's that's been in about an hour. One more line. I don't know if you well, do or not. Uh, well, um, no. Um, what we have next is the change, right? Yes. So right. This right. might this is probably a good stopping right. point. Right. Right. Perfect. So you, he gets he gets after him in this next session here. So right. There's about five pages here, or six pages left. Okay. Uh, do we have anything else? Um, no, just throw it out there. If you want to get on the list to um, get in with us, <clears throat> I guess if you have to have at least a microphone. Um, so I found that out today. Our uh, friend we made last week, our brother from last week, said he tried to join. We didn't have a microphone. Um, but he, he and I have been chatting on Twi Twitch. So right. he, he said, uh, I don't know if everybody can see it, but I think it was a, what do you call that question? We don't really need an answer, but it says the question I've always had is I can't fathom 
is how he was and has always oh. been there. How is he just there? Before creation, right. he was just there, but how? Someone right. so holy, someone so powerful, just has always been there, even before he created things. It's just amazing to think that, amazing to think and know we have a father like that. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Well said. Yes. Friend. And when we when we turn from our worldly idols, right, and we turn to our God, he's pleased and blesses us. Right. Yep. <laughs> he doesn't sure have to worry funny about it. She pokes her head in there. There. Right, no, she just <laughs> pops in. All right, well, we're getting a, we're getting better, and we'll be do better. So I found out I can do slides. So oh wow, uh, turn your word document you know into chat. either uh, Google Slides or PowerPoint. He said he sent me a message. Oh yeah, he said yeah, it was a very good Bible study. Thank you again for the invite. No problem, brother. We will. Uh, you're on the list. So when I send the email out. Um, You'll just get out there. I don't know if you have Facebook, but you can like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, like us on Rumble. Those all those things would be great as well. Um, yeah, I don't. Some... I don't have any problems. I don't have any problems connecting live on my smartphone. So even if you're not on the PC, if you want to go on the smartphone, you can still like get a, in there. Yeah, Lisa's using her tablet. Um, you could use your iPhone or your Android device or. Whatever. So otherwise, um, we're going to sign up after, yeah. after prayer, right? You want to pray yeah, us out, Dan? Yeah. yeah, I will tonight. Okay. All right. Lord, we come and give you great thanks for your amazing um, words that you have put before us through Isaiah. We ask you that you apply these to uh, our lives and that we return and follow you from our full heart. And we say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Sleep Good well. Night. Thank you. You too. Thank you.